In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today we celebrate the feast of the baptism of the Lord. Officially today also marks the end of the Christmas season. So, it is time to take down your Christmas decorations. And in case there is someone you are yet to send Christmas wishes to, if you are not done with that tonight, then forget it. You can leave it till next Christmas. In the New Testament, especially in the Gospels, a prominent question is that that borders around the identity of Jesus. Who is Jesus? At the point Jesus himself would ask, Who do you say I am? Who do people say I am? What about you? Who do you say I am? And in today's gospel passage, people were already experiencing heightened expectations. And they came up to John the Baptist to ask him, Are you the Messiah? Tell us. And John would say, I am not. I am not even fit to undo the straps of his sandals. I will not be surprised for us who are outside reading the Bible to be wondering, why was it confusing? John is John and Jesus is Jesus. Were I to be there, I would have been able to tell the difference between John and Jesus. But you know what they say? The spectators tend to know the tricks of the game better than those who are on the pitch playing. But when you send the spectators to the pitch, the story changes. Critics of leaders, when they are followers, know all the tricks of leadership. But when you make them leaders, the story changes. They say that passengers tend to know the tricks of driving better than drivers. But when you give them the steering wheel, the story changes. And so for us, reading as spectators, we think it is that easy to tell. But let us get into the Bible as participants, no longer as spectators, and see how easy. Come to think of it, there are two persons here, person A and person B. Person A is a Levite. Person A, father, is a priest. Person A talks like a prophet. He dresses like a prophet. He keeps away from ordinary people, mixing up with them. He abstains from food, abstains from drink. Person B, his father is not a priest. His father is a carpenter. Person B is not a Levite. Person B shows up wherever there is party. He eats and he drinks. People identified him with sinners because he was mixing up with sinners and tax collectors. At a point, person B even comes to person A to be baptized by person A. Who would you suspect is the Messiah of the two? Certainly, you would pay attention more to person A. But there you get it wrong. The Messiah is person B. That was a challenge in today's gospel passage. The other question is, why did Jesus go to John for baptism? If baptism is meant to cleanse us from our sins, and Jesus is God and free of sins, why did he go for baptism? We can identify three reasons. Reason number one, Jesus went to be baptized for the same reason that he became a human being. He became a human being to identify with us in order to save us. And so in his baptism, he took up our responsibilities, he took up our guilt, and then he went to be baptized, not for his sake, but on behalf of us. Reason number two, Jesus went to the water of baptism in his divinity in order to sanctify the water of baptism. In preparation for your baptism and in preparation for my baptism. Reason number three, Jesus went for baptism in order to keep to the tradition. 
In the first book of Samuel, chapter 16, verse 13, King David was anointed by a Levite. And that tradition has continued. And now Jesus, who is a descendant of King David, following the tradition, goes to John the Baptist, who is a Levite, to be baptized. The books of Chronicles make it clear that Samuel, who anointed King David, was the son of Elkanah, who is a Levite. And so Jesus did this, corresponding with what David did. In the same first book of Samuel, chapter 16, verse 13, when King David was anointed, the Spirit of God rushed on him. And today, that Jesus receives his baptism, the Gospel passage tells us the Spirit of God descended on Jesus in the form, bodily form, like a dove. So three reasons. One, to identify with us, he went for baptism. Two, to sanctify the water of baptism. Three, to follow the tradition of the king being anointed by the Levite. The baptism of Jesus also reminds us of our own baptism. For baptism incorporates us into the one body of Christ. We each become different parts of the body of Christ. And so today, we reflect on our identity. We reflect on that part of the body of Christ that we are and what we are expected to do as a result of that identity. Many of the crises we have here on earth is as a result of the crisis of identity. People do not know who they are, and as such, there is crisis all over. John the Baptist, in today's Gospel passage, knew exactly his identity and his role in the salvific mission of Christ. Even though people came to tempt him to usurp the position of the Messiah, he would not succumb because he knew his identity and he was contented with that. Today, so many people run into troubles because they always want to be the center of attention and attraction. When they attend a baptism for a child, they feel like be, being the child to be baptized. When it is a wedding and they see that every attention is on the bride, they feel like, oh, I wish I were the one. Sometimes I'm tempted to think that some who have become so sick in this way can even attend a funeral and when they see the attention of everybody on the corpse, they'll feel like <laughs> being the corpse in order to get every attention. But life is not like that. We all play different roles in the body of Christ and sometimes we need to take turns. When John knew his time was over, he stepped aside for Jesus to take over. And so, my dearly beloved in Christ, today we are challenged to identify that part of Christ that we are and to be contented with that and to make the best of that. Many times people pray for blessings from God, not for themselves, or rather not based on what is meant for them, but based on the way God has blessed others. And do not get me wrong. I am not saying you should not learn something good from someone else. But do not pray that God should bless you exactly like he has blessed the other person. Because the truth of the matter is, you have no idea the challenges and the crosses that may be accompanying the blessings of the other person. There's a very popular story that uh, helps to explain this particular point of being contented with who you are. Um, the story is about two different couples. A younger couple who were uh, maybe about two to three years in marriage and an older couple of about 35 to 40 years in marriage. The younger lady became so much dissatisfied with her husband and she would go to the husband to complain. You do not love me enough. You do not show me enough love. Can't you learn from the older couple? And the husband asked, what do you want from me again? I just bought you a car. I just bought you a home. I provide everything you need. So what are you requesting from me now? 
And the lady said, Yes, I know you have bought me all this, but can't you open the door of the car for me like the older, the older man does for his wife each time they come to church? After so many years of marriage, the man still opens the door of the car for his wife, but you cannot do that for me. The young man got angry and left. His young wife went to the older lady and asked her, Mom, please tell me, what is the trick behind this? How are you able to get your husband to still open the door of the car for you? And the older lady said, My daughter, it is not what you think. You see that car of ours? The handle for opening it from inside is poised, is broken. So we cannot open it from inside. That is why my husband always goes out to open the door for me. So what you are seeing is not an evidence of love, but evidence of poverty. We have no money to replace it. And so my dearly beloved in Christ, the point today is, know yourself, be yourself. Even if you are growing, become the better version of yourself and not someone else. And like they say, in case you want to become someone else, there is no vacancy. Everyone else has been taken. You are the only one else. You are the only one left. So you know what? Pick yourself up and move on. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you. The Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.